اسمي عمر امين رقم السجين 5061413 تهمه لدي انه قتل شخص وانا لم اكن موجود اصلا في في ذاك الوقت في في العراق Did you kill Isan Abdul Hafiz Jassim? No. Have you ever been a member of ISIS? No. Have you ever been a member of Al Qaeda? No. Have you ever been a member of any terrorist organization? No. Then why are you here? يعني أنا لحد الآن أنا مستغرب ليش أنا لحد أنا هنا في هذا المكان. We begin with the arrest of a local Iraqi refugee accused of having ties to ISIS. He's wanted on a murder charge in Iraq. This morning, the FBI conducted a search warrant at the man's Arden Arcade apartment. For more than two years, Omar Amin, an Iraqi refugee, has been locked up here in the Sacramento County Jail. In the summer of 2018, he was arrested by federal agents and charged with murder. The arrest came as part of an extradition request from the Iraqi government who accused Amin of killing a police officer on behalf of ISIS in Iraq's Anbar province four years earlier. In addition to the murder charge, the Department of Justice claims Amin has ties to terrorists like Abu Musab al-Zarqawi, the founder of al-Qaeda in Iraq, and Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi, the first caliph of the Islamic State. Have you ever met Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi? No. What about Abu Musab al-Zarqawi? His arrest made international headlines and helped drive home a narrative the Trump administration had been pushing for years. Terrorists are gaming our immigration system to infiltrate the U.S. and carry out attacks. But Amin has maintained his innocence. He says that he was living in Turkey when the police officer was killed. These are all the exhibits that we filed in the case. Rochelle Barber is one of Amin's federal defenders and has been fighting his extradition for two years. We know Omar was in Turkey at the time. He was a thousand kilometers away. He had nothing to do with ISIS. He had nothing to do with terrorism. Amin's defense relies on evidence they claim proves he was in Mersin, Turkey, applying to the UN for asylum at the time of the killing. So the, the crime, the, the murder, happens June 22nd, 2014. Omar moved to Turkey uh, late March, uh, March 31st of um, 2012. And he went there openly with his passport, and we have the entry stamps. They have a very regulated refugee system in Turkey involving they take Omar's passport and hold it. He can't travel without permission. He has to sign in weekly. Amin's defense team has spent more than 4,000 hours uncovering a number of contradictions and discrepancies in his case to help save their client from having to face the Iraqi judicial system. I mean, we're talking a death penalty case. You keep calling it a death penalty case, why? People are accused of terrorism in Iraq, of being part of ISIS, um, are getting the death penalty. That makes it a capital case. He'll be executed if he goes back to Iraq. Despite their efforts, they have struggled for more than two years to obtain his Turkish cell phone records, which they say will establish that their client was in Turkey at the time of the murder. The big thing that we really are holding out hope for are Omar's cell phone records from Turkey. We know the Turks have that request. They've said they're working on it. Um, we're asking the judge for enough time to get them. Um, so far, he's given us that. After months of investigating, Vice News was able to obtain the records. For more than two years, Omar's defense team has been working to get the documents that are in front of me right now. They detail a four-month period between May and late August uh, that show every call that Omar received, every text message he received, every call that he made, and they show locations where those calls were made from. So we're gonna start going down this list and calling people uh, that spoke to Omar in the days leading up to Isan Jassim's murder to get a better understanding of what was happening during that time. 
how did you know Omar Amin? Omar Amin, we are not the At the time, Hassan Abdul Hadi Amar was living in Istanbul. Amin was living 600 miles south in Mersin. Phone records show Amin called Amar the day before Jassim's murder, then again two days after. The records only reflect cell network calls, not communications in text or VOIP on apps like WhatsApp and Viber, which Amar said is what he used most often to call Amin. My name is Michael Adams. I'm a journalist at Vice News. Uh, welcome. We also managed to get a hold of Amin's brother. The reason that we're calling is that we, we were able to obtain your brother's cell phone records, Omar Amin's cell phone records. And, you know, as we're going down through them, we see that you talked to him uh, a couple days before Rawa uh, was taken over by ISIS. Among the handful of individuals we were able to reach, they all remember calling Amin in 2014. Before Vice obtained the records, U.S. Attorney McGregor Scott said in a statement, that the DOJ considers them contradictory evidence that is not admissible in extradition hearings. And quote, at most, the cell phone records might prove that Amin's cell phone was in Turkey rather than Iraq at the time of the murder. The cell phone could have been left behind in Turkey. When you would call Omar, would anybody else ever pick up the phone? No, no, Omar, Omar was. At the very least, these records prove that Amin's phone never left Turkey from May through August. His attorneys say this evidence proves their client didn't kill Isan Jassim. Last week, Scott's office filed a motion citing Vice's reporting, asking Amin's attorneys to turn over their copies of the records for review. The presiding judge has given them until the end of the month to submit an update. 